Yo, so in this video, I wanted to do a full Insta360 studio tour in 2025. So the last time I did this was last year. And since then, there's been loads of different updates and stuff. So I think it'd be cool to run through the software again and give you guys the full tutorial. So if you're brand new to Insta360 and you want to learn how to get the most out of this editing platform, I'm going to give you everything you need to upgrade your videos and make some real cool footage. So this is Insta360 Studio as I've opened it. And you'll notice here on the left, I've already been working on some projects, but this is essentially where your um, files will be. In the middle here, we have our viewfinder, which is our 360 video. We have the timeline underneath here. And then on the right here, we have some of our tools, which I'm gonna go through all of them in a second. Now, when you first drag footage in here and you're ready to work on your footage, it's gonna show up here and you can navigate between different clips that you have. And you can also display it in different ways that suit your preference. You can display it in thumbnails, almost like little mini screens, or just a list. I like just a list, just keep things really simple. And then here we also have camera files and then we've got favorites as well. So it's a, just a great way to organize all your clips. In the middle here, the viewfinder. So the timeline, how it works, you can click on your MacBook that I'm using and you can scroll across the timeline or just click and you can move across through the timeline. You can click on your video and move the camera around. Then above here, we have some of the tools. So we can skip the start of the video, skip the end of the video, obviously play the video. Um, and then we can also trim our video, trim the start and trim the left and the right. And we can use the command and the brackets to do that. So if you want to trim parts of your clip, you can do that. You want to work on a small segment, which we'll do. So let's just do that now. So I'm just going to command left bracket and then command right bracket for our little clip right here, back to the start. And then inside the footage, you'll notice that we can change the ratio of our video. So we've got all these to choose from, do a vertical, square, 16 by nine for YouTube, a little bit different for like Instagram and social media. I'm going to stick with this for now. We can also take a snapshot. So if you want to take a cool picture from your screenshot, you can click this and you can save a screenshot image, which is pretty dope. And then we can also go to full screen as well for previews. On the right here, I want to go through some of the tools here, which are quite important to edit him. So stabilization type first, so a little tab. Now I always keep flow state stabilization on. I don't know why you want to turn it off. Insta 360's flow state stabilization is insane. Direction lock. I've already done another video on the channel about direction lock, but this is going to vary between video and video and different creators and then what, what kind of outcome you want from your video. There's a lot of times where I do use direction lock and there's a lot of times where I don't but it's basically a way of locking the way that your camera lens points. So if, if the camera lens is pointing forward like it is now, it's going to try and follow the forward position as I'm turning. But if you've got it turned off, you're going to have to add keyframes and manually turn the camera, which is kind of cool for some scenarios, but not all scenarios. Then when we go down here, we've got our stitching settings. So here you can decide how you want the camera to stitch your footage because depending if you're using a, a dive case or a premium lens guard, it will adjust the stitching based on that. You'll notice here it kind of crops in and out if I change it. And I use just click normal because I don't never have it on. Custom as well, I never use custom. <clears throat> you can decide if you're using the thermo grip cover or not. So the thermo grip cover is used when you're filming at super high resolution, like 8K, just because the camera gets quite warm. So you can decide if you're having that or not, because it's got obviously like a cover over the camera. 
And then I never really touch the, the stitching optimization saying, I just leave it like this, but you can have a play with them and see how it looks for your footage. Um, <clears throat> and then you can also calibrate the foot, the stitching as well. And this is pretty cool, the batch setting option. So if you want to batch set a certain number of videos all the same way, you can set this up so it does has all these settings for, the, for all your videos. That's kind of cool. Uh, image processing. So Insta360 have now introduced a way for us to do a little bit of color grading inside Insta360 Studio. I very rarely use all this. I do all my color grading somewhere else in Final Cut Pro. But if you wanted to adjust your videos in here, you can do that. Like, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty intuitive. Got plenty of different settings here. And then we can also add color, pro, color plus, different clarity settings, uh, motion ND, which I will show you how to use this in a second. And then AquaVision for anyone filming underwater and then different audio settings, whether you want to direct more of the focus towards the voice or get rid of any wind noise, you can click noise reduction. But I use microphone covers on my X4 and I've never had to do anything with the true audio. So let's go back over to our center stage here and let's look at how to actually edit a 360 video in here. So or you can also look at the 360 clip as well if you want, but I just edit from here. So to put a keyframe at the start of your video, you're going to press Command and K, or you can press um, this button right here. This was the keyframe button. And once you do that, you can then select these different angles here. So we can choose the pan angle, the tilt angle, roll angle, field of view and distortion. And then we've got all these different settings here for field of view. So obviously this changes things crazily. Tiny planet, mega, ultra and d -warp. I generally go for mega and then adjust my footage from here. So we're gonna go, probably go for 0.34 on distortion. Then I'm gonna bring my, I drag my field of view out. Get nice and wide, position that down. And then I'm gonna place another keyframe, probably some frames in probably here after the turn. Let's turn, I'm, I'm literally using my Mac trackpad here and I'm just pulling the camera around where I want it. And I'm gonna press Command and K again. And that is another keyframe. And you'll notice here, it's put two keyframes on the timeline. And what it's gonna do now, if I go back to the start and show you, it's gonna transition between the two keyframes. See it turning. It's not ideal. I could do some refining on that, but you get the idea of it. And I would just work through my clip on my piece of video and reframe it all the way through. Now you see this real faint yellow line between the two keyframes. This is the transition and you can click that and you can click and tell Insta360 what you want the transition to be like. So at the minute it's set to smooth dissolve. So it's like a quite a nice transition between the two. You could do slip in, fade out, fade in, slip out, slip in, slip out, or fade in, fade out, or none at all. So have a play around with those because they will affect how your camera moves between the two keyframes. And then we just go for our footage and we add the keyframes. I'm just going to just quickly add these. What we can also do as well is we can we can add something here called Motion ND. So Motion ND is adding speed blur or motion to our transitions. So we click this. And then we can go up to, uh, where is it? Uh, this set in here, Motion ND, and you can adjust the spread and the intensity. So this again, you have to play around with. Uh, even just the smallest numbers have quite a big effect, so be quite sparing with it. Uh, this isn't going to play at full speed because it's being edited at the minute, so it might be quite jerky. But basically what you'll see 
Let's just see if I can exaggerate this a bit. So can you see what it does is it adds motion between the keyframes to give your footage a more realistic feeling of motion. That's still too much, I think. I mean, you can you can play around with the spread. See if we go up 100% on the spread. This is kind of spreading across the whole image. What if I go spread right down, intensity right up? And see there it's kind of intense in the outside of the frames so you kind of like want maybe an even balance not too intense though this is kind of a bit of a game to play around with it might take a little while to tweak you may not even like this same but it's there if you want it and then also in here we've got the option to deep track so this might not work too well on this clip but what i can do is i can actually drag with the left mouse button and I can actually select the target and the camera will try and track that target. So if I can draw a square around the rider in front, center the target. So let's just see what happens here. I've never actually used this. I've known it's here as a tool, but let's see how good Insta360's tracking is in 2025. It's doing a good job so far. Is it going to lose me around the bush? No, it's still going. Fantastic work. All right, let's click stop tracking. Let's give this a play now, late. So now it's going to track the rider in front in green. Let's see how well it does this. That's actually pretty cool. Now, I'm not too keen on my chin being in here, but I wonder if I get rid of all these keyframes here. Get rid of our motion track. And I start the motion track earlier on. Center the target. Obviously it takes a little bit of time, so I'm not gonna do the whole thing here, but you kind of get my point that if you are following someone, it could be quite a fast way to do your editing. And it actually looks really cool as well. Then there's the option here to add a logo to a video. If you wanted to do that, you can actually pin a logo. Um, I am not really too sure why you got a logo, but it's there if you'd like to add a logo that sticks in your footage. And then we can do some clip management so we can name clips, add clips, just for, just for some app, more organization. And then you've got the info here of all your file properties. So if you want to know what the camera's settings are when you shot the clip, how big the file size is and everything else, it's all in there. And then once we're ready and we're happy with our clip and we want to export it, we're going to click this big yellow button up here. And then we get this export settings page. This is quite an important part. And we get to name our file, choose where it's going to be saved, uh, preset parameters. So you can actually create presets if you have a standard that you want to save and keep applying to all your videos. Uh, the bit rate. So obviously this will change depending on what the output of your video is going to be, whether it's going to be social media, YouTube, or something else. Uh, we can play the resolution, encoding format, frame rate will stay the same, and the media type will stay the same. And then you just click start export, and it will do its thing, and it will chime a little cool noise when it's done. And that's essentially it. Um, that is as far as I have got with into 360 studio with all the latest updates um, i'm going to make some more update videos uh, as soon as i know when the software gets updated because they're always coming up with new features which is cool to share with everybody but that's into 360 studio in a nutshell i hope this tutorial was useful if you've got any questions drop them below and make sure you check out some of my other into 360 and action camera tutorials on this channel